it's Thursday, the 14th of March. Um, Ian's at work and I'm trying to, hang on, hello, little nippiness. You can see that, there we go. <laughs> hello, what are you doing? What? What are you telling me? What do you want? Yeah? What do you want? Even you don't know, do you? It's just been out for a wee. <laughs> it's just had a treat. So he's just come running up the stairs thinking, yay, we'll get some more. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I've been busy getting ready for tomorrow's class. We have the uh, journal making class. Here's the other one. There we go. Hello. Hello, you. And we've got the journal making class um tomorrow so it's going to be an early start tomorrow morning to get over to lincoln for at nine o'clock in the morning ish to get set up um, and do the class uh, i've been preparing a lot of stock and bits and pieces to take with us so that's kind of <laughs> taken up most of the day today um i've got a big pile that's what nippy was just looking at down there on the floor i've got a big pile of, of stock ready to take um of things that I've, we've had to create, <laughs> make, um, just to take with us. Because we don't really hold a lot of stock. Hello, darling. We don't really hold a lot of stock anymore and because we can produce our own on demand. So, um, yeah, so to take to a class, we've had to produce a lot of stuff. <laughs> anyway, so it's been busy. Um, so Mr. Bentley has been poorly for the last couple of days. Um, you know how dogs are sometimes. He it just it's just been off completely and utterly. We've given him a check over. Um he's not hurt himself, he's not limping or anything, but he's just out of sorts. Um so I don't know whether it's something he's eaten or what, um, or whether or not Mr. Nip and him have had a falling out. Um, you know, the shifting dynamic again. <laughs> that sometimes happens when you've got two male dogs in the house. It sometimes happens when you've got two blokes in the house, never mind two dogs. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a shift in dynamic and he's just, it's almost like he's been sulking for the last two days. But anyway, this morning, he seemed to be coming out of it. He's eaten normally. He's been playing with Teddy. We've been out on walks, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I just don't know what's been wrong with him. But like I said, he's slowly coming out of it. So it's about 6.30 on Thursday. Ian got back from work at about six o'clock. So we've just quickly had something to eat and I've jumped in the car to go and pick mum and dad up because they're looking after Bentley and Nipper tomorrow while we're out doing the class in Lincoln. So it's the first time I've driven in the dark for quite some time. It's quite unnerving. Right, so I'm coming round with the video. So, wave. Wave. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Yes, do as you're told. <laughs> Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> Big wave. Hi. You're hiding. Still waiting for that one to arrive. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs>
Have you enjoyed yourselves? Yes! yes. <laughs> I'm not throwing it yet, you dafty. <laughs> Come on. I suppose I'll see him for a while now. So it's Saturday morning, just before lunch. And I've just done my mission inspiration art journal page for the week. Uh, prompt this week is colour. Love it. So I decided I was going to do a kind of Picasso cubist kind of face inspired by the illustration that's been provided on the oracle card prompt for the week um so that's what i've done so i've drawn out it was in one of those um uniball eye ocean care pens and the one that's been made of recycled plastic taken from the ocean um which helps the environment and all that kind of stuff blah blah anyway so i've drawn out my my face and then i thought shall i color it with pencils or shall I do it with um, alcohol pens? Because with alcohol pens, like Copix and Promarkers and, and the thousand and one other brands that are out there with alcohol pens, you get a more matte finish, a more even finish, so more block colour. Um, so that's what I did. So I raked out the pens uh, that were donated to me from Mum when she decided that she was retiring from crafting. Um, these are all the pens that I've got. These are all um, Letraset Pro Markers. So that just tells you how old these are. And um, because the company was bought out by De La Rowney um, a couple of years ago, and they're all now branded De La, Row De La Rowney. But these are all so Letraset. And for the most part, they're all still very, very juicy. Um, I had to go through each one of these pens when I got them from Mum, and there's 85 of these colours in, in the set. And I had to go through each one individually um, to to see whether it still worked, whether it was still viable to use. Um, and I only had to throw a couple away, which is really good. So anyway, um, so I've gone through and I've coloured in my Picasso cubist kind of illustration. And there we go. That's it. And I've taken a line from a song from a children's TV show um, that, used to be on um, when I was a kid called Rainbow, seen as the um, the prompt is colour. And the theme song, which incidentally, a <laughs> bit of trivia for you. Um, if you're a Hercule Poirot fan, um, the guy that was in the band that sang the theme song for the Rainbow programme later went on to portray... Um, Captain Hastings in the Hercule Poirot TV series featuring David Suchet. So when when you watch the TV program or listen to the music for the from the show called Rainbow, um, that's Captain Hastings from Poirot. There you go. So there's a little bit of trivia for you. So that is my picture. So as I was putting it back into my journal, I realised that I'd done it on the wrong page. Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd do it on page on the back on the second half of week two, when in fact I should have done it on the back of week seven. Oh, sorry, week eight. <laughs> because I'm a numpty. So they're going to be out of sequence when I put them back in my art journal, but that doesn't matter. I've actually numbered them in the corner, so I know what week belongs to what. So, you know, these things happen. These things happen. Um, you know, but that's the reason why, you know, with these things, I could always cut them back out again and re-stick them back on again um, and reshuffle them around at my leisure later. But that's what happens when you get so wrapped up with what you're doing um, that you kind of forget what you're doing sometimes. <laughs> I suppose we're all guilty of that occasionally. <laughs> So I've just come in from the garage where I've been doing some laser cutting for some new kits, new bits and pieces, only to find Ian is cutting the grass outside. The first cut of the year. 
So it looks like there's a few patches that are gonna to need to be treated. A few bits and bobs. And somebody else has come to see what's going on. Hello, you're not going out there? Not while Daddy's cutting. He did say that his arm was hurting him. <laughs> but he seems to be doing all right. After lunch, just had lunch. Got back from mum and dad's at about 12.30ish, just after 12.30. Had some lunch with Ian. Um, I had smoked haddock and salmon chowder for my lunch today, which was mm, beautiful. Um, didn't make it myself. It was shop bought, but I just heated it up in a pan. But it was beautiful. It was really, really nice. Definitely something I'll be having again. I've not seen it before in the supermarket. Um, but when I did spot it, I thought, ooh, that sounds nice. So, and it was. Um, inexpensive too. Anyway, um, I digress. So, um, as soon as I got back after we'd had lunch, Ian grabbed the car and has gone out to do loads of errands. The dogs are um, quiet, asleep. Um, Bentley is asleep on Grandma and Grandad's bed. <laughs> Nip is asleep on the bed um, in the back bedroom. Uh, which is his usual place where he likes to go, if not on the settee downstairs. But anyway, I digress. Um, so I mentioned uh, a couple of days ago, I think, that I was working on some new laser cut kits and stuff. Um, and I thought I'd just share what I've done. Um, I've just cut some um, for photography, um, but I haven't popped these out of the carrier sheets yet. But um, I did a project a while ago, uh, this one where I used a dragonfly um, laser cut wooden piece. Um, and I said I was going to make that available as, a, as part of maybe a kit, which is what I've done. Um, so I've created a sheet of um, dragonflies, big dragonflies like that. I've put a heart into the center. Now, originally when I designed this, um, I designed it and forgot to put tabs in and thought, hang on a minute, if since I'm cutting a heart shape out of it, I might as well let you guys have that as well as part of the kit. So you can just pop it out. So that's going to be, so you've basically got the two large dragonflies with the filigree wings. I think you can see that. Is black better or is white better to see it behind? Probably white actually. There we go. Um, so the two big butterf butterflies, two big dragonflies, and four of the smaller ones for um, additional composition elements. Um, so I've done that. So that's now going to be, I'll put this on in the next couple of days or so. Um, hopefully I might be able to get it done before the vlog goes live. If not, it'll probably be in the few days or maybe over the weekend. Um, for that one to go live or I might just keep that as a um, as a launch for April along with my two new stencils the damask and the Swiss cheese one um, so there's that but of course I thought well since we're doing dragonflies we've also got to do butterflies I know I'm doing a butterfly band this year where I'm not going to be using any butterflies but I thought you know just because I'm not using them I'm just say you guys can't use them which I've said before so we've now got a set of filigree butterflies as well so again two big ones uh, and two smaller ones um, but while I was creating those I came across this really nice kind of um, wreath kind of shape like that which has got I don't know if you can see this like a rose that's better with a little bit of foliage. I thought, oh, that would look really nice with the butterfly as a kind of like focal point set like that. So I created a kit, a set of two small ones like so. So you get a butterfly and two of those wreath kind of things on the set. And then I thought, Do you know what? I'd, I'd still like a really big one, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, so I did that as well. So I've created a larger one with one big butterfly and two smaller ones, which I will be also making available on the website fairly soon. So there's going to be those two, those butterflies, and then the dragonflies. So 
keep an eye out for those because they'll be coming very very soon oh and i've also restocked the cogs as well by the way if you wanted those um, they're now back on the website again because they've been out of stock for ages and ages and ages and i've just forgotten to put them back on again but they're now back on again for your steampunk creations so yes hopefully you'll like those Not much walking going on today. Come on, Billy. Come on. Come on then. Come on. So it's Tuesday, just after lunch. Um, and I've just sat down and filmed um, an art journal page project for Wednesday that I'm planning on scheduling for Wednesday evening. Um, I, when I woke up this morning, I thought to myself, I haven't just done a, well, say I haven't done one for a while, um, for a couple of weeks anyway. Um, I did a collage done with... Um, cut out for um, from magazines to make up a landscape scene for one of the mission inspiration um, weekly prompts a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a picture of the project here. Um, it was I think it was Horizon, the word Horizon, uh, and I'd kind of created a horizon using cut out colours from a magazine, um, and then did the sky from different blues and the, the land from different greens and then did a cityscape kind of like with other shapes and that kind of stuff in, in on the horizon for it and I, and I kind of enjoyed the process of doing that collage and and I haven't really done a proper composition collage since doing that one but that was specifically for a prompt so I thought that I'd have a go and do another collage um, today which I've done um, but when I was going through my bits and pieces, my digital collection, I realised that I don't really have a huge amount of images or bits and pieces specifically for creating collages. Um, I've got loads of digital stuff like digital ephemera and that kind of thing and, and you know, book pages and music paper and old maps and all that kind of stuff. But nothing specifically for creating collages. So I kind of had a thought um, of maybe trying to create um, a collection of images and items, backgrounds and focal points, and putting them together as a collage collection, as a digi download on the website. Um, but then, <laughs> then I thought to myself, I wonder how much it would cost to create and actually have one printed specifically. Um, even if it was only like 24 pages, but the pages had items that you could actually cut out and do collages with. Um, I know there are a few companies out there that do do um, specific books for collage that contain, um, you know, images and stuff. Um, specifically for cutting up and sticking down and to make collages but they're very few and far between um and kind of limited in scope and style um and i just wondered you know is it something that maybe i can look into because it's kind of interesting um you know it, it, even if it's just like done on theme as well so maybe do, do a theme a, a collage set of, of items of maybe you know, like fruits and vegetables. So you've got slices of lemons and, and oranges and broccoli and, and all that kind of stuff and bananas and apples and tomato slices, that kind of stuff. Uh, burgers and, and that kind of thing that you can use in your collages. Um, and then maybe like theme them. So you could maybe have like things from the, under the sea or animals or, or whatever. Um, I don't know, it might be something to think about. Um, if people, if there's a big enough cross section of people out there that want to do or are only interested in doing collage, because there are quite a few people that just like doing collage, 
and not really interested in the mixed media thing or the painting thing um, or the art journaling thing, but do like creating collage artwork that are kind of underrepresented in what materials they have, apart from buying magazines or used magazines, because magazines these days are quite expensive. Um, and you picking freebies up from like the supermarket and that kind of stuff, you're limited with what's actually in them. Um, you know, and you can't really steal magazines from doctors and dentists waiting rooms. <laughs> I suppose you could get magazines donated to from your, your friends and family, that kind of stuff, if you're really interested in doing that. Um, and then I know a lot of people like to sit with a pair of scissors and cut out from magazines and put them into either colour groups or themed groups of, you know, like I've just said, like animals or vegetables or food and that kind of thing, or buildings and or cars or transport, that kind of stuff. Um, so I just wondered, would it be in, would you be interested? Because I don't want to go ahead and create a load of um, digital download sets or even go to the expense of having stuff printed for collage if there's not a big enough market out there, if there's not a big enough section of my audience, subscribers and followers to make it viable, if you know what I mean. But anyway, I digress. So I was talking about the art journal page that I did. There we go. That was the one. So this is going to be edited and will go live on Wednesday. So by the time you're seeing this vlog video, it will have been yesterday. <laughs> But for me, it's tomorrow. <laughs> so there you go. That's what I've created. And I really enjoyed doing it. And I ought to do more collages more often. So it's Wednesday morning. It's the 20th of March today, and I'm on my way to pick mum up to go do some grocery shopping. This morning I've left Ian at home with the dogs stuck on the telephone. Um, in November last year, Ian turned 60, I don't know whether you remember, um, and two of his pensions kicked in. Um, and he received, he started receiving like regular payments from uh, February, once they'd got it all sorted out. Um, but this morning he was supposed to receive a payment and it wasn't what he was expecting. So he's been on the phone this morning to the pension company and they've told him it's because the government have given them um, a tax code, which means that they have to deduct tax at source. But because he's self-employed, they shouldn't have done that. So he's um, he's on the phone to the government. So I've come out early. <laughs> I left him do it. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.